Hey, what's up everybody? It's Levi Ellis here. Thanks again for watching and welcome to my new subscribers. If you're new to my channel, I'm trying to bring you cryptocurrency news in an entertainment kind of way. So it's easy for you to digest. So today, I have an interview with the CEO of Rivets. So what is Rivets? Rivets focuses on cybersecurity. In a world that we are moving more and more to the Internet of Things, cybersecurity and cybercrime is always a thing that has been there since the beginning of the Internet. So nowadays we are very inefficient whenever it comes to cybersecurity. Mostly it's done on a software level. But where rivets differentiate from the competition is that they have found a way to secure mobile devices on a hardware level. So imagine this use case. Everybody's saying that you need a Trezor, a Ledger, or a KeepKey hardware wallet to keep your cryptocurrency safe. Wouldn't it be great that your mobile phone will be as secure as a hardware wallet? So that is what rivets can make possible for you guys. So without further ado, let's go to the interview. Let's go! So guys, I need to apologize today because I got a little bit of a cold. But I have an interesting guest for you guys today. I have Steven Sprague here, the CEO of Rivets. Steven, huh? welcome. Thanks for having me. I look forward to it. Thank you for being on my show, Steven. So can you do a little bit of a, be um, a background about yourself, uh, a little bit of you know history, where you are coming from? Sure. Um, so my name is Steven Sprague, and I, I have been um, in the trusted computing space almost my entire life. Uh, I got involved back in the early 1990s, um, actually doing uh, metering of entertainment and video games and movies using hardware security on uh, actually one of our first implementations was uh, in an early prototype of a Sound Blaster card. And, and so uh, doing digital cash week, we could sell bullets in doom at one ten thousandth of a cent a bullet on a demonstration in 1996. So microtransactions in high velocity has been highly entertaining for a long time. But uh, I, uh, I was involved in a publicly traded company for 15 years, really at the forefront of uh, trusted computing, the standards. We were one of the early board members and really driving that technology into the marketplace. I left that company in 2013 mm -hmm. to form Rivets really because the market was moving from a PC-centric model very much to a mobile-centric model. And now finally, the hardware security technologies are inside all of our mobile phones. There are a billion phones that will securely store your identity and access and keys so that you don't have to remember usernames and passwords. Sounds great. So we are going to talk about cybersecurity today, guys. So, Stephen, can you, can you make it a little bit more tangible for my audience? So... Um, in terms of the market and the uh, expected forecast in this market, can you can you share more insights into this to make it more tangible sure. for our viewers? Yes. So, so the best way is to start with something we're all incredibly familiar with. Mm -hmm. We all have a mobile phone, and on our mobile phone, we have become incredibly accustomed to you dial the phone number and you push the send button, and every time you push the send button, you expect it to work. You expect the phone to connect and call mom or, or the children, you know, can dial it without any trouble. Mm -hmm. Underneath the send button is a multi-billion dollar industry of hardware security that has protected the carriers and the carrier service for 20 years. And it wasn't always the case. So SIM modules, mm -hmm. a technology that was originally introduced in Europe, and then eventually brought to the United States. I had a, a phone in 1994 that had no SIM in it. Mm. And so I had a password for every long distance phone call. So you used to dial the phone number and then it would go beep, beep. And you'd have to type a pin number in. And then your phone call would complete because it was a password for every long distance phone call. Because in the early 1990s, there were 80 million phones stolen by just using a radio to steal the identity of the phone. So we all know this technology extremely well. If we build hardware security into the phone and we use it to make a phone call, mm -hmm. we've been able to teach 
our mothers and our children how to use this capability. However, when, when we put apps into phones, we went back and copied the old um, online model where everybody should have a password for everything. Mm -hmm. And this has become really annoying and not very safe. And so over the last really decade, the industry has been working to put programmable hardware security into the phone so that we can store all of the other keys and not just the keys for the carrier. And so this hardware security is called Trusted Execution Environment. It's been pioneered by ARM in their processor designs. It's also now in the Intel processor designs. And it is the ability to have a vault inside the chip that will store and process secrets completely independent from the operating system. And so we can now load all the apps we want on our phone because who knows which app and where it came from and you know, your friend says, download this great game, and it turns out it's a hack from somebody, mm -hmm. you know, to store and process the secrets. So in the future, I log into my phone, and my phone logs me into all the services to which I belong in the world. And so the experience should be very much like we are accustomed to today, which is when I go from Germany to France, do you have to log into the other carrier's network, or does it just work? No, it just works. It just works. We yes. just want it to just work. <laughs> exactly. And so, and so that's the model. How do we have services that are bound to the hardware of the device that store the keys and let's make our little robots that are in our pockets work for us and not against us? And so it's important for us to have a vault where we can store and process secrets. Rivets is about building software to make that vault easy to access and easy to use for many different application developers. Okay, and are, are there also, let's say, competitors in this space that are uh, able to, to let's say, uh, access that particular hardware section? Or are, are you um, guys unique in this space? So, so I will say we're unique in that we are one of the few companies that is absolutely purely focused on making this hardware security work. Companies like Microsoft and Intel and others are certainly leveraging the capabilities, mm -hmm. um, but they're just including it as part of their normal operation. And, and as a result, most people haven't even heard. I'll use an example. There are 1.5 billion PCs that have hardware security on the motherboard compatible with Windows 10 mm -hmm. that mostly nobody turns on. Oh. Because they don't understand that the device can play an important role in protecting your services. Mm -hmm. so, so this is a new technology. I think it needs a new model of deployment. And that's where blockchain comes in. I'd been doing trusted computing for, oh, I don't know, 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I walked into the Miami Bitcoin conference in 2014. And I was like, oh my, this is the rest of the puzzle I've been looking for. <laughs> this is how we're going to globally manage all of the keys. And so... When you combine blockchain, which is a fantastic ledger-based mechanism to secure keys on the network and not, not have them change and, and add data to them that can't be changed, it's really fantastic. What trusted computing is, is the human interface to the blockchain. This is how we protect the private key and the instructions that we send to a blockchain to say, oh, move some money or please store this document or change my key. Where do I put these keys? The humans are really bad at keeping track of keys. True. We want to, <laughs> so, so trusted computing is there to provide and simplify that human to blockchain interface and provide the protection that we really expect. And it should be just built in and automatic. We shouldn't have to think about it. Yeah. So, and, 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 and can you also tell the viewers a little bit of the size of the markets of, let's say, cybersecurity damage that's being forecasted in the next years and why cybersecurity is important also driving forward to an environment where everything will be connected to the Internet of Things? Yeah, so I can, I can spend um, an entire day just <laughs> scaring people, but we've learned that just scaring people doesn't actually help them. Yeah. So it turns out that if I tell you to fasten your seatbelt in your car, It took us, what, 25 years of shipping seatbelts before our children were in the back seat going, click it or a ticket. 
you know, which is a sort but, of classic US phrase. But it helps phrase, right? now, eh? It helps now. Eh? Yeah, but we, <laughs> but we now have trained the children to be compliance monitors. Yeah. And so we are all fastening our seatbelts. Um, I don't, I, while we can spend a lot of time talking about mm. the fraud and waste, and it's enormous, the numbers are in the billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, just in, in ICOs, in, in blockchain, in the last month, approximately $50 million plus has been stolen. Mm -hmm. So True. it's an enormous number. I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge number. That's a multiple percentage points of all the money that's been raised. So, so the, the challenge is how do we turn it into a conversation of quality? So if I said to you, here, buy this device, it's much higher quality than this other one. Well, I mean, you're in the Netherlands. This is, this is sort <laughs> of the, the heart of what, Netherlands manufacturing has been right, which is, yeah. you know, look at the beauty of design and the quality of the product and yeah, okay, it costs 25% more, but, but look how, look how pretty it is. Yeah. And, and, and so this is about driving, not a risk conversation in security of, oh my God, you're going to be stolen, but a quality conversation. Security is user interface. Yeah. So a good way to explain it is, um, an apartment building in a big city might have a doorman, might have security cameras, might mm -hmm. have observation in the elevator. And as a result, when you get up to your million dollar apartment, you have one key to put in the door and it just worked. True. If you live in, in the, you know, projects in, in, you know, a, the <laughs> slum of a city, right? Yeah. You, you have 10 locks on the door because you don't know who has the lock. Yeah. You, know, you have extra ticks inside. You put a chair underneath the door handle because you're worried about the rest of the infrastructure. We're at that end of the stage right now in internet where we're putting the 19th lock on the door. Mm -hmm. and, and then we're waking up and discovering there, that the hinges are screwed in on the outside. So anybody with a screwdriver can remove the hinges and it doesn't matter how many locks I had. Yeah. So, so I think this is the challenge, which is this is about moving to a quality conversation mm -hmm. because I think the customer is more interested in quality than they really are in protection. We will all take risks as humans. That's what humans do. True. And we need to protect ourselves in a manner that is automatic and that is that that creates sort of a, a proper delightful response that, oh, that worked exactly as I wish it to work. You know, we like just pushing our fingerprint on a button and it just logs us all in. Mm -hmm. We expect the rest of the infrastructure to be real. Yeah. The fact that some of that biometric stuff is very fake that's the problem. Yeah, is it? Um, it depends. It a lot of it has weakness where mm -hmm. I think I'm logging into my machine, mm -hmm. but the reality is where the fingerprint is compared is the big problem. Yeah. If I compare it to software on my computer, then it's easy to break. Mm -hmm. It has to be compared in hardware. Mm -hmm. And many machines, many of the higher end machines do it, do that. Facial recognition is not anywhere close to as secure as touching your fingerprint mm -hmm. on a sensor because how do I know the camera didn't um, substitute a picture? Yeah. There's no security or integrity in the cameras. Yeah. But there is security and integrity in the biometric sensor, the fingerprint sensors. Mm -hmm. so actually, fingerprints versus, versus video, fingerprints are probably more secure. It, it's The goal here is to provide the consumers what we expect, which is that our devices are safe. Mm -hmm. And I think as we look in blockchain, everybody's learning that, well, you can't just store your keys in an Android wallet. You're going to lose all your money. Exactly. We discovered that, well, you can't even use SMS two-factor authentication because somebody will just change your phone number. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. For, for 20 years of, of doing marketing and sales in the security industry, Every single marketing firm you talk to says, you know, we should take your software and we should conduct a, a, um, a, a challenge that if anybody can break it, we'll pay you a million dollars. And then let's see what happens. <laughs> this is a really bad idea because all security has weaknesses. And the only good thing that's going to happen is that your security is going to get broken. Yeah. Blockchain is a persistent demonstration with Bitcoin of exactly that marketing exercise, which is, oh, we're going to build it all in software and we're going to put $100 billion on it and you can't break it. How are we doing so far? 
not been broken. so good, right? <laughs> you know, it, anytime anyone, you know, transfers a large sum of um, Bitcoin or Ethereum, mm-hmm. I guarantee you even the greatest professionals in this market are in have, have a small panic streak going up and down them of did they do enough things as a human to make sure the security was there to protect that hundred thousand dollar or million dollar um transfer how do i know that the address i was sent really is the address yeah we have so much work to do that's what trusted computing really will help with and and that's where rivets um both what we're doing in our ico and and the technology we're bringing is designed to, to make easier and make built in is that those the the transaction that's executed we can actually prove on the chain was done with keys protected in hardware that the security systems were properly working when they were executed that there are some cybersecurity controls that improve the quality of the data that's stored on the blockchain